Square Ball Podcast. Welcome to Propaganda, brought to you in association with the Levi Solicitors, who are offering you a 10% discount on your legal fees. As always, levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. There are three things on offer until the end of January 2023. Those three things, Michael, are... Wills, and, probate, and conveyancing. Wills, probate and conveyancing. 15% discount on those. Same web address, levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. And they're doing um, phone appointments now as well for Wills, so you don't even have to leave your house. Uh, booking system is on the website. Check out the website for details. Propaganda, then the show where we have a listen to some of the clips that are doing the rounds in the football world. Uh, some leads, some not. Um, rather than us intro the show, Rob, should we should we just start with... Um, or should we let the Everton fans do it? I'm sure they're, they're happy. People want positivity on this show, don't they? And here it is in spades. Hello and welcome to the Paddy Blues podcast. It's Everton 1, Southampton 2, Everton shit, Frank Lampard's fucking useless, Bill Cunwright's a knobhead. Did he spot a box and there's a little bottle? Far up machine, he's a knobhead. The players are all shite. Everton is shite. This podcast is shite. Um, so let's just get into it, Jamie. Give us your initial thoughts on how oh, shit Everton are. And I don't care about swearing today. Go for it. If, you kid, if your kids are up, you shouldn't be listening to it anyway. Send them to bed with no fucking supper. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes to show we're all equally as mad as each other. We're not as mad as Everton fans. Do you not think? No, they're really furious they've got um full ridsdale era vibes about them they've spent they've actually got a squad that costs a load of money it's just not working what's wrong with them though they've got loads of money they've, they've spent loads of money frank, Lam- frank lampard's hardly spent a penny according to him <laughs> yeah he's, he's hard done by they're getting a new stadium what, what's wrong with them apart from the money he has spent he hasn't spent any mm. yeah, everything leads want to be stadium on the way all this money on players <laughs> <laughs> promising young manager it's what we could have had is he, is he young still, Frank? He's just learning his trade. Well, what, should we hear from Frank? But a little bit later on, let's save some of this towards the end. Mm. Um, like last week, I think we did the, the classic shit sandwich, didn't we, on propaganda, where we got some of the, the fun stuff out of the way at the start, saved some for the end, and kind of went a bit in on leads in between. I think we're going to waver it. We're going to have a little interval, an interval of Scouse fun <laughs> coming up in a bit, and we'll talk about leads. So people say this podcast is not positive enough. Oh, sometimes it's not negative enough. It's the Goldilocks problem, isn't it? You mm. need to get it just right somewhere in the middle. So let's start positive then. Skipton Welly um, sent us this. I was feeling quite positive after the match, but having watched the match ball, I feel thoroughly depressed. It was a good performance. Nonto looked good. We had some shape. Pascal's having a bit of a shocker at the back. As much as I love the big sexy pirate, I think he just needs a rest. Um, apart from that, midfield did well, and we looked dangerous. Villa were lucky tonight. We got lucky. Um, so come on, lads, cheer up. We're going to be fine. Trust me. There you go. Trust a little, a little pause. For, trust me. <laughs> Honestly. Honest. Yeah, I tried to think <laughs> about that there. Um, were we too negative? I mean, there was actually a accusation that some of us were being too positive on the uh, the match ball, and there was a bit of a Goldilocks scenario. Uh, I just screenshot the comics that did make me laugh, and I'm, he doesn't seem to know uh, our names, so I'm not... We can See if you can work out who he's chatting about here. But he says... Uh, <laughs> Go on, bald guy in the middle. You are the blinding light. Don't let the hairy guys pull you in, the, in with their positivity. You are realistic. The hairy ones are naive. I'd never class myself as particularly hairy. I'm not a hirsute it's man. You're quite, you're quite hirsute, though, aren't you? Actually, from eyebrows oh, yeah, downwards, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Got yeah. a good... Good rug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, can see, I can see underneath the table. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, so we can never get it right. Can we? We can never get it right. Um, We've even upset a Villa fan, actually. If, we? if I mention the YouTube comments, uh, I noticed someone, uh, <laughs> J, J, VTID. Villa, t- Villa Till, Till I, I die? die, I guess. That Either is, that yeah. or he needs to go see his doctor. Yes. I've listened to a few Leeds podcasts this weekend. I like to get a gauge of where club fans think they're at. I have to say, this is the most bitter one I've heard. <laughs> Shame, I like Leeds as a club, but some of you don't know how to be humble. We've got to be humble in the face of the mighty Villa. Mm, I don't know. He's like scraped just... a two-one win against Leeds, the greatest club in the world. People, they don't get it. It's not. For, it's not for you. This is out. <laughs> it's a podcast for Leeds fans who understand where we're coming from. It's supposed to be swivel-eyed and lunatic. That's the point. You f- go away. <laughs> Come on, don't like it. Right. Um, the away end. Let's talk about the away end because uh, some more dissent against Marsh. We talked about this with Phil on the Phil Hay show on Monday, actually, saying that like it first started bubbling under or over if you like against Leicester away never really gone away it's kind of just been under the surface and it's just resurfaced again 
and may really bubble over against Brentford if that one goes badly. Or I can even see it getting a bit a bit mean if things don't go well against Cardiff. Mm, yeah, Chris was there. He said it was 50-50, he described it as, but then did acknowledge that the reception at the end wasn't great. Yeah. Uh, and said, I think it's probably a fair comment. In the exact same game under Bielsa this time last year would have been okay-ish. Um, the difference is it's never consistently worked under Marsh. The patience is thin all the time. Yeah, I said that to Phil. There's, he's got um, no kind of credit in the bank in that regard. There's mm-hmm. never been any momentum that's built up under Marsh where you think actually there is a bigger thing at play here and we'll be fine. It didn't seem as bad as it was at Leicester. Like I couldn't really hear it on the telly until we mm-hmm. looked on Twitter and we saw tweets saying oh, there was a few chance of Marsh out, whereas at Leicester you could audibly hear it on telly them seeing what the fuck is going on. Um, so it was a better performance than that. and it did feel I mean as much as we spoke afterwards about how much we want to sack Marsh it did feel a little bit like ah. well you were in that game till the end as well that was the thing it, Leicester it was pretty clear pretty much from the first minute that we weren't going to mm. get anything from that so it's much easier to turn I think at that point whereas when you, you're still trying to I guess mainly support the team in, you, in a game like Villa yeah you said on the, on the match ball Michael that the away support is kind of the litmus test for where it's always heading this mm. so what what do you think of it what do you think it's like at Ellen Road at the minute obviously we haven't been there since West Ham uh, we will find out twice this week is it kind of a, has it got to that grumbly sort of quiet grumbly level do you think at the minute it's just kind of is it waiting for something to happen is it waiting to boil over yeah I think it, it needs to go one way or another and I think it's it's very much veering towards a marsh exit at some point but I guess the club's in a position at the moment where it's we're just waiting for something on all fronts, aren't we? I know we're waiting for signings has now happened because we've, we've obviously got um, record signing, record signing in, um, and Verb came in, you know, came right at the start of it. But waiting for an ownership change, waiting for signings, waiting for a managerial change, probably it's just all or, a bit... or waiting for the manager to start working to some visible extent. Yeah, best performance of the season, apparently, most complete. He said. The most it was since complete. he's here, isn't it? Uh, yes, which is uh, quite damning. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, on that, I think on um, Moscow's match report on our blog was kind of asking the question: "With this is the best we've had from Marsh, is it really good enough?" But I was actually thinking back: like, was it actually? It, it was definitely a, a. There was signs of promise in there, but was it actually any different to say the game away at Leicester in his first game in charge, where we had a load of chances, mm. squandered them? and gave away a goal and I was even looking at the, the stats in that game and it, it's kind of like a handful of stats so it's not completely indicative of it but the, for the Leicester game the XG they had 0.51 we had two uh, we had seven shots uh, we had 19 shots to seven and we had 49% of the ball against Villa it was XG they had 1.24 we had 2.36 so we had a slightly lower XG against Leicester albeit we looked like conceding fewer as well and the shots are kind of the same we had a bit less of the ball against Villa and it's all just things like it all just adds up to it's still the same a year on, almost. Mm. Like whether it is the most complete performance or not, I don't know. Well, it remains to be seen, doesn't it? Boney um, M was very angered by the, oh. the complete performance thing on the feedback. He said the only thing complete about that performance was the complete balance in the technical area, which is it's, it's gone, a, in, with, gone in with both feet there. <laughs> Tell us what you really think. Um, I mean, there's, there's people as well who, who accuse not necessarily us, but Leeds fans in general of being anti-American with this sentiment, and that's not it, is it? I mean, he's. There are certain American characteristics to his manner, like say the positivity, for example. But that doesn't mean that every American is like overly positive and like Ted Lasso, which has been the comparison that has, has been made to him. It's just, it's just because he's not won many games, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. All, that is really mm. all it boils down to. It, and for as much as we, you can talk about the things that are going wrong, he never fixes them. Jake in Florida saying as an American fan and Leeds fan since 2005 I know great timing uh, I want to see Jesse Marsh succeed more than anyone um, but good God he's clearly not the answer for the club you can see it on his face too and he knows it he's been manager for a year looks like he's age 10 uh, it's like those pictures of the American presidents before and after their terms in office you can see him losing his mind in real time speaking of losing your mind Spurs <laughs> they didn't take that well did they <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean most normal right minded people would say yeah that you know Ramsdale has got form for for that a little bit, hasn't it? But you, there's, there's a boundary there. You've just got to kind of, as a fan, you've got to suck it up. Probably don't go down to the front and boot him. No. So you know, where where does the blame ultimately lie there, in your opinion? Well, I, I listened to Richard Keyes and it was it was pretty clear where it, <laughs> whose fault it was. Ramsdale has got form of winding supporters up and apparently has been having an exchange during the course of that second half with those Tottenham fans. Uh, ben White as well, who was over there, 
uh, you know, two nil to to Arsenal. Now, you know that. Richard, Richard, right? As footballers, you get battered from the terraces. I, I you understand. get battered. I've been called every yeah, but every that name. Mean under to the say, sun. Jason, you can react to that. And, no, no, there's, a, there's an element of reaction, but of course, the, we don't know his, his his way of winding them up. He might have just been giving them a, a, a two nil. He might have just been doing that. Like so, you know, there's there's a line. My fear is, and I've said it for a long time now, that the guy in the middle there is the one that's most to blame for the inflammatory behaviour touchline that winds people up. And, and if he's not behaving himself, then it's likely that others in his team are not going to either, who ultimately then becomes the master of the discipline. There isn't anyone. Talking about Arteta, of course. So Mikel Arteta made Ramsdale make that fan kick him. Correct. It's the, uh, <laughs> the argument he's making. I hope when that fan gets arrested or banned or whatever's going to happen, he goes, no, 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 it's not me. Not me, you're after. <laughs> Arteta. <laughs> yeah. Who's, oh, the, who's the daft thing, thing is, I agree with his general take on Arteta that's the funny thing it's the fact that he can't let go of it it's like and everything <laughs> comes back to that because Arteta is a pain in the ass, and we saw it he, tr- he tries to run the refs the players are all up in the refs faces it's probably a, a cultural thing that has been instilled within that club but Richard Keyes let it go mm. yeah and the, the Spurs fan who booted him as well he must have done that and thought oh shit <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst maybe after the adrenaline subsided what happened when you did it <laughs> It was not me at Sheffield Wednesday, to be clear. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things, you know, you, with it being a footballer, probably end up getting a bloody prison sentence for that. Yeah. Which, which wouldn't be, I don't know, would that be? Would it be too harsh? Maybe, maybe. You wouldn't normally get a prison sentence for kicking someone lightly in the back. No, you wouldn't, but it's, it's sort of, he it didn't, it didn't enter the playing, the playing surface though, did he? And that's the criminal offence. Oh, so if you if you can boot if someone while perched on a hard thing, so that's something you can't. Really long legs. So he didn't, he didn't enter, yeah. So if you like Mr. Tickle, you could just <laughs> be at the edge of the ground at the state and stand and go... It's a good idea. You're under the playing surface, yeah. Where does it start? Where does it end? Um, we've got an unhappy Liverpool fan. Should we do it now or should we save him? Let's listen to a Leeds one first. Should we do the Liverpool fan afterwards? Oh, go on. Right, so this is, is Joe talking about whether things have got better or not under Jesse. The reason I think that Marsh has to go is because I think fundamentally the squad is better than it was last season. And we are no better. In fact, I'm pretty sure we're on the exact same points tally, which, by the way, Jesse, is a fucking relegation battle. (laughs) But if you look at the players we brought in, Sinistera, I know he's been injured for a while, Adams, Rocker, Aronson, Nonto, they are all fundamentally good footballers. And yet, overall, we are no better than we were last season with a much weaker injury hit squad. That is on Marsh. What do you reckon to that? You agree, broadly? Broadly, yeah. The, releg- the relegation thing, he shouldn't have said that. Mm. What was he thinking? It's just obviously going to get thrown back in his face because it's, yeah. you can't. It, you look at the table. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> it's r- ridiculous denial of the truth. It's, it's, a, it's bordering on gaslighting, isn't it? But in his defence, I think what he was meaning to say was, look, there's a long way to go in the season yet. Table doesn't look great now, but there is half a season to go, so let's not panic yet. Yeah, but... Yeah. If we were bottom of the league by five points, you could still say, "Well, you know, we've got, we've got an, we've, we've still got fifty points left to play for, or whatever, however many games are left." You know, you, there is always potential to win every game, isn't there? But, is, is it not just someone that? with such a sunny disposition as you? That's the way you are <laughs> to look, is it? But is is it not kind of just a, a case that everything he says at the minute is just not going to land because we're not winning points or enough points? Probably yes. But I think I think it's when you see the disconnect between things the manager is describing and reality sometimes is a bit jarring. It's like when Warnock used to come out and say we've played really well and blame the ref for it when we'd lost 3-0 and had one shot. And you think, mm, I, you've watched a different game to me there, Neil. Squad, is it better than last season? Yeah, I I, I would say so. I, I, yeah, I don't really buy the argument that this is a useless squad, that there's nothing Marsh can do and we just, we're hitting that Premier League glass ceiling like, Especially when you look at, it seems like Fulham and Brentford doing well mm. as well, and we've seen these players play well, and we've added to them. Like I say, until that mad trolley dash at the end of the summer, and we were all sat here like, yeah, it's been a good summer. This we've done what we needed to do, bar a couple of things which will, which will hopefully happen, and then it, yeah, we needed a help, but it was like two players, wasn't it? It wasn't like a get all this squad out and we need to change them all. I think the squads. There's talent there, I think, definitely. Yeah. I mean, Rafinha leaving is the main one. 
Calvin sort of half counts because he was injured for so much of last season. But so. also, like Phillips and Rafinha, Phillips just didn't seem to fit into Marsh's system or he came back unfit, I don't really know. And then Rafinha was a right wing back, but produced <laughs> the long throws under Jesse Marsh. So, like, were they that integral to it all anyway? I don't mm-hmm. know. £100 million pound Rafinha? Yes, maybe. Would you have him back? For £100 million? Like maybe less? <laughs> On loan, with Barcelona picking up all these wages? I just say to him, you don't have to pay us uh, what you owe us if we'll just have him back. We'll just re- retake um, ownership of him. I think we probably need that money <laughs> to, <laughs> to pay for our other signings. So, I don't know, a direct swap. They can have um, Furpo back. Hmm. Yeah, that would be fair. Possibly. Yeah, because we probably owe them money for... We must be, we'll be able to work some out, <laughs> some sort of deal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think it's the better squad. I mean, he's, he's had like the best part of 150 million quid spent on it. So Yeah, I was looking at the players who played particularly central midfield or sort of attacking midfield last year. And you had, I mean, obviously Click is now out, out of there, but he played 26, get started 26 games last year. But then you had like Forshaw starting 17 and then Roberts and Shackleton both starting seven each. Mm. And I don't think that calibre of player is getting that many games in this with this squad. No. And that was the issue last year. That was when we were saying what is going wrong. It was central midfield, wasn't it? We were, well, and left back, because that was always the case. And up front. But, central <laughs> midf- but apart from that... <laughs> but central midfield, I think, was the main issue last season, wasn't it? Because it, was it was the summer everyone going, just buy a central midfielder, please, God. Yeah. And then we actually did it in this summer. So Might be in for another one. You never know. We never know. You never know. Uh, well, there's some more Leeds fans. And Villa fans, I'm interested to get the Villa take as well, because they were actually quite level-headed versus... Uh, some of the stuff that we've um, we've heard from our own fans, but let's should we should we enjoy Liverpool first because I feel like you know we, we need to get onto the next course of the of this long dinner that we are having here. Mm. They're just trying to compete with their city rivals, aren't they? I think for who can be the, the most upset at the moment. Yeah. So this is from um, Anfield agenda. Anfield yeah. agenda. That's it. So it's not the normal. Speaking of the, if we're going to keep drawing lines of bold or not bold, this is a not bold. Northern Irishman on Anfield Agenda. The main man on it is a bold Northern Irishman. So this is, this is the Amu's bush before the main course in a minute, yeah? Hmm. This team is absolutely fucking awful. We are playing abysmal. This is one of the most embarrassing performances I've watched us put in. It's absolutely embarrassing. And Jordan Henderson, get out of the... No, not get out of the football club. <laughs> Just get on the bench and get relegated to Milner Road because you should not be starting for this football club anymore. You're not good enough. Yeah, we are fucked. Liverpool are fucked for good. We're finished. Without midfield investment, we're done. Now, I knew Brighton were going to fucking win. I should have put my whole fucking life savings on them. Maybe I could fucking... Oh, fuck off. Brighton are in again here. Brighton are in again. Brighton are in again. It's 2 nil. It's fucking 2 nil. March. 2 nil. fucking Brighton. 2 nil. fucking Brighton. Well, fuck me, Pink. 2 nil. Brighton. Sorry, March at the double. It's 2 nil, And this football club is in fucking ruins. We are fucking finished. We are done. It's 2 nil. Brighton. We are finished. Kiss goodbye to top four. Kiss goodbye to winning trophies. And say hello to mediocrity. Because I tell you what, Liverpool Football Club are absolutely fucking finished Andy Robertson by the way what the fuck are you doing get him off as well you iron brew haggis merchant what are you doing that is absolutely shit defending we are so so fucking shit we are so bad what a goal from Brighton 3-0 to them Danny Welbeck the goal scorer it is 3-0 to fucking Brighton Danny Welbeck has scored I didn't even know that man was still fucking alive we are a fucking embarrassment of a football club and John W. Henry you old decrepit Bostonian ball sack I hope you fuck off out of this club get the fuck out you are ruining this club from the inside out you poisonous verminous <laughs> right right Yay for American ownership. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, wow. Won the, won the league. I mean, yeah, and they've won the European Cup. That's, I mean, that's the loyalty that Jordan Henderson gets when he... I know. Henderson, get... Uh, oh, all right. <laughs> get on the bench. They're kind of there with Klopp at the moment as well, because they're like, he does, he does need to... It remi- actually, to be fair, the Klopp's have made me a bit sad, because it reminded me of us last year with Bielsa when things were going wrong, and you were like... Oh, someone maybe just needs to make some tweaks to make things a bit better. Somebody stage an intervention. <laughs> make it make sense. Yeah, because all the players that they really loved, they hate them all now, which is a bit of a shame. That was the uh, the perfect audio representation of being a football fan, though, when he's trying to, don't know, quite know what to say. He says, fuck off. <laughs> I just think that. <laughs> but to be fair, you can also find yourself doing that. You know, when you score, safety away fans have been giving you a little bit of jit mm. and you just kind of go... 
Yeah, 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 yeah,
but in terms of my um, my abilities, I always remain confident about that because I know I'm not a miracle worker. I know I'm not the best coach in the world necessarily. I mean, to, to proclaim that would be I would be stupid anyway because so many people have got things and successes behind them. But I know I'll work as hard as I can be to be as good as I can be, and I think that's that's it. That is it. He's not one of he's not the best coach, but he's he's mm. one of them. And people might have been saying it. But they'd be wrong. He wouldn't say it himself because no. the others have trophies and stuff. But it wasn't for if it wasn't for those trophies, mm, yeah, you know, he'd be in the conversation. Maybe. Yeah, he's not won them yet, is what he's saying. There's something quite telling about you know, like, obviously, like people in the comments that we've received here just don't want to hear from Jesse anymore, and everything he says seems to be wrong. And and you were saying it like, uh, was it on the match ball, Michael? Like, do you think he's? Oh, was it the Phil H? I can't remember. But he's saying, does he does he talk too much? Mm. Does he say too much when he answers? But it's an interesting technique, isn't it? If you if you're ever interviewing somebody, or you sat in a room with somebody, or you're on the phone with somebody, the best way to get them to talk is just not to say anything. So sometimes if you if you just wait and let the silence hang, people feel obliged to fill it. And I wonder sometimes if that's what football managers do and say silly things. I think Lampard's so confident in himself. He he thinks he's churning out some absolute gold when he's doing his press conference. He's like probably leaving it and going like. Yeah. <laughs> You're not projecting at all there, though. <laughs> Fucking nailed another one. Piece of piss, this. I'm good at this. I'm not, I'm not the best, but boy, am I good. <laughs> um, and I guess we could uh, complete the journey, circle of life, and circle back to um, to where we started on this, which was Everton fans going mental. Uh, loads of people will have seen this on Twitter um, and on various other socials of their fans. It, were they confronting the players leaving the stadium after the game? They seem to have got little um, roadblocks from somewhere. It was quite resourceful of them. They seem to have like the proper, you know, they have when roadworks are being done, the little plastic barriers. Seem to put them across streets to stop players leaving. I saw one of there was there were a few players. Anthony Gordon was being called a rat as he was leaving. So they could, what was it, forty five or fifty million? They turned down for him from Chelsea. It's fucking brilliant, that, isn't it? Yeah. There's, there's that young lad they've just recalled on loan from yeah. Sunderland. He's only about 19. He's sort of doing all right at Sunderland. They've dragged him back to this mess and now he's not getting let out of the stadium. <laughs> Apparently he just looked horrified by it. I thought, the poor kid, Christ. <laughs> yeah, so Anthony Gordon didn't get out of his car to chat. We just want to chat. <laughs> it's like, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> but Yerry Mina did. And I think when Yerry Mina got out, they went from being furious to having that moment of going, oh, he's a big bastard. Fucking hell, he's big. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot he was like six foot six. Go on, Tez, you go talk to him, Tez, you go talk to him. <laughs> but this is this is someone, I mean, bear in mind, Yermina is Colombian. Yeah. So he's trying to understand this let's in, apply, in, let's, in, in let's, a second language. It's a second language, but let's apply some, uh, some stereotypes to Colombians as well. He's seen things. <laughs> Oh, there's, there's a lot of scouse noise there. Lad, lad. Mm. Speak up, lad. Speak up, lad. Show a bit of manliness, lad. Yeah. Should have lamped him when he said that. <laughs> 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 fucking knocked him clean out. <laughs> um, just to go back to something we spoke about on the last propaganda, Stevie Nichols' finger. Mm. We did try. You actually asked for an update, didn't you? I did. The, the um, Stevie Nichols' finger infection that burst on the table of ESPN. <laughs> yeah, that. And what's it's, he called? What, the guy who hosts it. Dan he, something, isn't it? Yes, but he he put a tweet out asking for any questions, and I did ask for an, a finger update. Yeah, the, the smell, whether it's still there, which um, which was described by Stevie Nichol himself as sm- it smells like dog dirt. <laughs> um, and we'll finish on this comment then from Fergus McLeeds, who is having a pop at Jesse. He says, "Appreciate we're a threat going forwards, but we're just dog dirt at the back. Far too easy to score against, um, and so on and so forth." But it was just it's nice to know that that's, it's getting cultural traction again. Thanks, mm. to the, thanks to this show. I want Dog Muck to come back as yeah. well. <laughs> No one talks about, oh, he's got dog book on his shoes. It's turning into a Peter K sketch, isn't it? It is really, yeah, sorry. Right, we'll wrap it up there, then we'll return with more. Bring my finger in. (laughs) 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 On which which bombshell? Uh, (laughs) I can't top that. We'll, We'll speak to you soon. The Square Ball Podcast. 